friends, we say hello. We did train together at one point, but he says, you know, I'm my own guy. He said, I'm not going to try to compare myself to the other great Philippine fighters. Let's take a look at the numbers here. All right, we'll take a look at how these two square off against each other. Dominguez right smack in his prime. Hesta still pretty young, but Dominguez will have physical advantages in this, mostly his height, and he has four inches in height over Hesta. He'll try to see if that matters here this evening. Tonight, using the unified rules, there is no standing eight count or three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last. Only the ref can stop the fight. If we have to go to an accidental foul stoppage. We will go to the scorecards only after the completion of the fourth round. All right, and with that, we'll take you to the middle of the ring and the ring announcer, Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, Las Vegas, Nevada. This is, esto es, Top Rank Live. Being brought to you by, presentado por, Bob Aram's Top Rank Incorporated, in association with Tecate, patrocinador oficial. This is our co-featured bout of the evening, set for 10 rounds in the lightweight division. Este es el combate coestelar de esta noche, pactado a 10 vueltas, in the category Peso Ligero. Los jueces son, the judges are CJ Ross, Jerry Roth, and Burt Clements. The referee, fair but firm, Joe Cortez. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trimmed in red and silver, presentando la esquina azul, vestido de blanco, con vivos plateados y rojos. His official weight. 136 pounds, su peso oficial, 136 libras, con un récord profesional de 36 victorias, 6 derrotas, 2 empates, y 21 victorias por la vía del knockout. As a professional, he enters the ring with 36 victories, against 6 losses, 2 draws, and 21 victories coming by way of knockout. El ganador del torneo, campeón Azteca Tecate, Fighting out of Culiacán, Sinaloa, Mexico. Ricardo Pelón Dominguez. His opponent across the ring in the red corner. Wearing white, trimmed in orange. Su rival en la esquina roja. Vestido de blanco, con vivos color naranja. Detuvo la báscula. A un peso idéntico de 136 libras, he dipped the scales at an identical 136 pounds. And he enters the ring with an undefeated record of 23 victories. One bout even, and 12 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Invicto hasta el momento en su carrera profesional. Con 23 victorias, un empate, y 12 de sus victorias por la vía del knockout. Representing Lobogon, the Philippines. Mercito, no mercy, his time. All right, gentlemen, we go to the rules in the dressing room. There you are, regular Don Camerino. Protect yourselves at all times. Keep your guards up at all times. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. Mexico, ver Mexico versus the Philippines will be celebrated at the highest level tomorrow night with Marquez against Pacquiao across the street at MGM Grand, but here tonight at Mandalay Bay to whet our appetites. A really good one, Mexican versus Philippines, and this, Hesta and Dominguez. I think so, and I think an either-way fight, really, and Hesta is a guy that really has something to prove. You were talking about the two title fights that Dominguez had, and you asked him during our conversation today, were you down, did it bother you, did it upset you, and he said, no. He said, I'm using it as motivation. Yeah, because I thought maybe he's a little less motivated. Now, you know, when you've lost those two title fights, you wonder, am I ever going to get another one? You know, maybe I've already peaked. This is all I can be. And I thought there might be a lessening of motivation. They said there was no way. He said it's just the opposite. More motivation for him now to be a world champion. He does have some pop. You talk about the fact that he had Soto hurt. 21 knockouts in his 34 wins. And in that fight with Soto, he had him in bad way in the second round, but he said he was reluctant to go in. It was his first 12-rounder, and he knew he had to probably go 12 rounds, so he didn't let all the guns go. 
There was a quick right hand from Hesta. Hesta in his last fight that you referred to, uh, Barry, earlier, a 10-round decision victory over uh, Manny Perez in September. He kind of posed a lot and acted a lot. I doubt there's going to be much of that tonight. He needs to be all business. Certainly has not done that so far, and he has been all business. Brought that right hand a moment ago very quickly. The similarities to Manny Pacquiao really end at the fact that they're both Filipino and both Southpaw. Hesta, as you can see here, does not use a lot of movement the way Manny does. He's not jumping in and out. Quick right hand. Another chopping right hand, top of the head of Dominguez. Dominguez is going to want to get his jab to work here, Barry. He's got a good jab. There's nothing singularly outstanding about Dominguez, but he's a good, competent, complete package as a fighter. An experienced, he's had 42 fights. Started fighting at the age of 15 at 35 amateur fights. I really like Hesta's attitude and the way he's approaching this fight much better than the, the Hesta that we saw a couple of months ago in uh, Denver. Yeah, he's, he's absolute all business here. And he told us that he feels he has to show better than he did in Denver. <laughs> Left himself a right hand, but Dominguez missed it. Coming to the end of the first round, competitive first round, Dominguez and Hesta, round two, coming up. Oh. Go. On the season finale of Adrenaline Hunter, Becky gets set to chat on her inner cowgirl. Get close. Welcome back, round two here at Mandalay Bay. Mercido Hesta in the white and gold trunks. And Ricardo Dominguez in the white and red. Now, I want to make one quick correction. I referenced that last fight of Hesta's being in Denver. He fought a Denver fighter, Manny Perez, that was in Parker City, Arizona, in September. And I'll tell you, he f the first round that he fought here tonight was more impressive than any of the ten that he fought against Perez in that one in Arizona. Yeah, very effective in that first round. He and showed a quick counter right that I thought was really impressive. He tried to land it there, too. Just brought a left hand very quickly behind the right that time. Dominguez, by the way, fought and competed in a television series, a boxing television series called Campeón Azteca in Mexico, much like the Contender series that you're familiar with here in the United States. And he won it, and it really added to his whole profile there. Yeah, brought attention to himself. There's a right hand from Dominguez. Said it's got him some of the good fights that he's had recently. Dominguez getting to work now, landing the jabs and the, his own right hands. He, he actually fights not in a typical Mexican style, but more in, almost in a typical European style. He is a stand-up fighter, hands held high, likes to use the jab to set things up. From Culiacan, of course, very close with the Chavez family, all of whom, incidentally, are in attendance here, two of them broadcasting for TV Azteca. Chavez Jr. has his own big fight coming up in a week as a, another good combination from Hesta. It was a right hand and a left behind it right on the top of the head. Chavez Jr. getting ready to face uh, Peter Manfredo. Hesta lives in San Diego. When, when he first came to the United States, he landed in Los Angeles, but it wasn't long after that that he matriculated his way down yep. to San Diego, and that's where he is now. And loves it. From Cebu City in the Philippines. Clash of heads there, but no damage, fortunately. Has to very quick. Now bouncing on his feet a little bit. He doesn't do that a lot, maybe just to find some rhythm. He's looking good tonight. He's looking very quick and accurate. And for that matter, Dominguez is looking okay, too.
Coming to the end of the second round, an action round here. More action coming your way from Mandalay Bay right after this. We come to round three. Mercedo Hesta, Ricardo Dominguez. Now, Barry, both of the first two rounds are what we expected, very close competitive rounds. However, I gave the slightest of edge in the both rounds to Mercito Hesta. As did I. Which is one of my big gripes about scoring in boxing, that the guy with the tiny little squeaker edge at 10-9 still gets, unusually with judges, gets the same score as a guy who wins a round definitively. That's true. If he doesn't score a knockdown. Well, there was a time, remember, in the state of New York where they were encouraging judges to score rounds 10-6, 10-7, 10-8, depending on how dominant a fighter was. They just can't seem to bring themselves to do it. Dominguez measuring him, trying to keep his distance. I think oh. that's a good idea for Dominguez, try to get a, keep this fight at a safe distance, keep Hesta out on the edge of his punches. Hesta will throw those long rights to the body on occasion. They're a good punch for him. That right hand is interesting. I mean, he, he starts it out right about his hip. And I don't think Dominguez, or for that matter, any opponent really can see it. You don't pick it up that quickly. Dominguez really throws that right to the body more than uh, most fighters from long range. Now, see, Hesta started to smile and nearly cost him there. Got to keep his mind on his business. A lot of eyes on Hesta tonight, Barry. Yeah, he needs to uh, get a good report card tonight. And he's he's right, right. drawn a tough card in Dominguez. Fighters are ranked, right, of course, and Hesta has okay, risen to number there, six in the uh, WBA rankings. So he's getting into position where if he can post a victory, oh, there a was a left hand. it's a knockdown. Yes, he's it is. Call that a knockdown. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Now Dominguez oh. argued with that, and he's going to blow around that he had one. Okay. It was a legitimate knockdown because the punch landed and his glove touched the canvas. That's right. Now Hester's gonna jump out of here. I'm not really oh, sure Dominguez oh, oh. is that hurt. I don't think he's hurt at all, but boy, did that cost him. That's a three-point switch in the scoring, yeah, Barry. Just like that. From a 10-9 round to a 10-8 round the other way. We're coming back. Ricardo Dominguez had dominated round three and then got smacked with that left. Now watch his right glove. That was enough to make it a knockdown. And if the judges indeed score that a 10-8 round, that means it was a three-point switch, Barry, from Dominguez winning at 10-9 to Hesta winning at 10-8. Wow. Big change. Big change. Now Dominguez really has to fight from behind. Hesta clearly the quicker of the two. The thing I'm impressed that's impressing me with Hesta tonight, his speed of hand and his ability to counter punch, which has really been impressive. Well, every now and then you can get a wake up call, even in a fight that you win. Perhaps that's what happened to Hesta in the last fight. You know, Hesta, he seemed almost embarrassed, didn't you think, when you start yeah. talking about Manny and people yeah. say, and, and that is so much pressure to put on a youngster. And he says, look, I can never be Manny Pacquiao. I'll never be Manny Pacquiao. I'll be really happy if I can win a world title someday. Absolutely. He's a well-spoken guy. Well-handled. His people around him very good. By the way, he never had an amateur fight, Hesta. That's he right. came out of the, of the ranks of Muay Thai fighters as a youngster. There's another quick right hand. And I'm telling you, he throws it like somewhere between the thigh and the hip. 
Now this this fight tonight, right. and I'm taking into a cap is because it's against a quality opponent. Is the best I've seen Hester look. Yeah, he's really sharp. Huh. And I'm not counting Dominguez out of this fight. Oh yet. no, no, he's got some pop. Dominguez, by the way. His nickname, Pelon. Uh, you can relate to that. Which, uh, yes, I have a very soft, uh, sentimental spot for Dominguez is because Pelon means bald head. <laughs> and I think it's a, just a fantastic nickname, but he's not bald. No, and that's named for key. his father, right. Octavio. <laughs> but everybody else calls him. And, and interestingly enough, his father's not bald either. But he said, nobody even calls me Ricardo. Everyone refers to me as Pelon. Pelon. Pelon's coming on now. Yeah, he's got, got Hester going here. backward. Hester says, come on. And Hester gets there with a the right hand and another one. We welcome you back. This is round five. And again, a good round for Dominguez. Except for the very end of it. <laughs> I, oh, and a nice right hand by Dominguez and a gun, a good counter from Hester Berry. This is really an intriguing match. <laughs> Dominguez misses a right hand and misses a left as well. I told Dominguez in the corner, don't step back. Once you're in there, stay in there. His problem here tonight, and I know he wants to move Hesta back, is that Hesta is really countering extremely accurately, sharply, yeah. sharp punches. I'm impressed with his quickness. He's mostly flat-footed. I think he fights about 80% of the time Hesta flat-footed. Two left hands from Dominguez. Hesta doesn't use the jab very much, but when he does, it's effective. Buried. Man, oh man, Hesta has really unleashed something very strong in his arsenal tonight. And Dominguez is landing good shots. I mean, Hesta, even when he gets hit, is countering well. Yes, he is. Well, it's interesting. I think some fighters fight up. To an opponent, some fighters fight down with an opponent, exactly. and it clearly has to fight up. The acknowledgement that he gave to us today, though, Barry, when we were sitting talking to him, when he said, I need to show more, that was, you don't hear that from a lot of young fighters. It's true. He's a very engaging guy. Boy, that right hand is so quick. All right, so. Dominguez is so close to winning so many of these rounds, but I, it's hard to give him one. Yeah, and here again, I mean, the, the counterpunching of Hesta, obviously the difference in this fight, it's not for want of trying from Dominguez. This is round six of what has started to be a lopsided fight in the favor of Mercedo Hesta. Well, it might be lopsided in the score, but the rounds are not lopsided. No, they're not. No, they're not. It's not a big wipeout, you know? <laughs> Dominguez is in every round. In fact, he, he came close. Maybe maybe a judge will have given him that last round, but they're close, but he's being edged in every round, I think. I like uh, Hester's corner, too. One voice, calm, one or two messages. Right. It's very calm over there. You're exactly right. His, by the way, the voice in the corner with Hester is Vince Parra. Right. His trainer... His chief trainer, really, is Carl Penalosa, the brother of the great former champion Jerry Penalosa. 
but Carl has not been able to be with Hesta for the last few fights because he is having a visa problems. So he's back in the Philippines, but he is still definitely part of the team. And when he gets those visa oh, problems straightened out, he will again be the chief trainer. Right, and Parra is the first one to say that. You got to give him the props. He's the guy that's really made Hesta what he is. right hand difference in the fight Dominguez now one thing he's trying to do Barry even if he gets countered is to then counter off the counter himself and seeing if he can end the exchange with his punch again a very good competitive round and again Dominguez is doing well in the early portion of the round It's that right hand to the body we referred to earlier, but it hasn't really slowed down Mercito yet tonight. You can just see he Hester just kind of waiting on him. Here's a left hand from Dominguez. Well, and, and that was unusual because Hester did not even attempt to counter off of it. Two punches there. Normally he's there with a the counter off of almost everything. Just missed with that uppercut. In my opinion, Dominguez is carrying the round so, so far. far. But we'll see. <laughs> Last 45 seconds or so. I thought it was interesting that in Hester's corner between rounds, they were saying that they wanted him to initiate things. And he's trying to do that in this fight. But to that end, he's not countering as much. Well, it looks to me like Hesta has really hung back in this round. Maybe he took the round off. Well, we're going to find out, but a good round for Dominguez. End of five. Mission. This is round seven. I believe I ended the last round saying end of five, but of course end of six. We now go into round seven. Good round for Dominguez. We're seeing Mercito Hesta fight out of a southpaw stance, which he has done since he started boxing, but Everything else, Barry, right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> Natural right-hander yeah. in everything. Said his dad made him fight left-handed. He said because there just weren't as many left-hand fighters and that they're hard to fight. Now he says he's completely comfortable with it. And he really doesn't switch up. He hasn't switched out of it at all tonight. guys had extensive amateur careers in the case of Hesta no amateur yeah, career at all but even Dominguez only 35 uh, fights right. as an amateur turn pro at 17 and that television show as you said was what really boosted his career right. Less volume in the punching of Hesta in the yes. last couple of rounds. Yes, the number of punches. Long way back, though, for Dominguez. Again, that right hand to the body. Maybe that's slowing Hesta down just a little bit. I mean, he's landed a number of them. All right, bring up. Rare that you see a fighter lunge with that right hand and be able to land it to the body. And of course, that really does. If you don't, if you don't land with it, you are really open for counter punches. Yeah, the counter punching from Nesta not nearly as prevalent in the last two rounds. Oh, 
That slipped in that time by Hesta. It's a very close round. Crowd got excited over that one. Coming to the end of the seventh round. We're coming back. Round eight of this 10 round fight. Barry Tompkins, Rich Murata alongside. Big weekend of boxing here in Las Vegas. Tomorrow night, of course. Manny Pacquiao. Oh, Marquez. Hey, I got to tell you, I love the international flavor too, Barry. It really adds something special. Uh, it's just been alive here for the last couple of days. A tremendous buzz, of course. Mariachi bands strolling the hotels, yep. lobbies. It's just wonderful. I went to the weigh-in today. There are probably six, 7,000 people there at that. And, uh, you know, a lot of those fans will have uh, made their way over here tonight to the Mandalay Bay. We've got a great crowd here in the uh, ballroom. SRO. Which, by the way, by the way, in this ring, it has actually been a big one for Juan Manuel Marquez in his career. He lost his first world title fight right in this Islander ballroom at Mandalay Bay in this ring against uh, Freddie Norwood and then won a world championship when he defeated Manuel Medina right. in, this, uh, in this very ring. I think these guys would like, these two would like to eventually scale the heights uh, coming out of this ring in the future. The right hand by Dominguez clipped Hesta on the chin. Dominguez, remember, has been the 12-round distance on a couple of occasions, so he's accustomed to it now. He's, this is a 10-rounder. There was that right uppercut that did get there, and it backed Dominguez up, and now a combination, and Dominguez is hurt. Holds on. Oh, Quick left hand, Dominguez says no. Uh, he may say no, but I'll say yes. yes. I mean, uh, Hester's bringing it in again in this round. Dominguez trying to pot shot it, and he's aware of the counter punching now. Look, he look at just look at him. You can see the the wary look on his face. Yeah. He threw that right and got right out of there. Oh, stop! Esther had that moment, which could be enough to give him this round. Esther right back on the attack. Coming to the end of round eight, and Hester found what he had before once again. Round nine of this 10 round fight. And at least on my card now, Dominguez would have to knock him out. Or at least score a couple knockdowns yeah. around, yeah. I'm just happy as an observer, a fan, a media member, whatever, just to see the more serious attitude that Hester's taken yeah. in this fight. Very definitely. And you talked earlier about fighting to the level of your opposition, Barry. And, you know, he said today, he goes, I want to fight guys of this caliber. Well, I think it's a fair statement to make that he will from this point forward. By necessity. And a reminder, we want to hear what you have to say, too. Follow us at TR Boxing or at TR Boxeo on Twitter or Facebook. And you can visit the uh, top rank website. It's a tremendous website, state of the art, a lot of audio and video, and a lot of interactive areas that you can participate in. 
Remembering also that tomorrow night's fight, Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez is also available through that, through the, uh, on the internet. The right hand again by Hesta, and another one right there. The only blemish on the record of Hesta is a draw back in 2005 with Ray Lagas. Since then, he's won them all. But tonight, the most well-known of his opponents. Yeah, Not just well-known, the best of his opponents. Yeah, and he's, he's stepped up. Dominguez still there, does not look tired, still throwing punches. But you know, when you're countered so much, Barry, you <laughs> it tends to make you very wary to throw a punch. It does, or at least certainly more than one anyway. We come to the end of the ninth round, and Hester doing a nice job of finishing this off. Tenth and final round here at Mandalay Bay. Ricardo Dominguez and Mercido Hesta. They did tell Hesta in his corner just before he went out. He's still dangerous. Let's see if Dominguez fights like a desperate fighter. All right, break out, break out. He has not so far no. in the first 30 seconds of the last round. I think the point you made about him being a little gun shy of that counter right hand is causing him just to throw one punch at a time. Break. Trying to pot shot Hester with the uh, straight right. There's a right hand and a straight left. Now, Dominguez is not fighting in this round uh, like a fighter who thinks he's as far behind as we've got him. He looks like he's trying to box his way to a victory in this round. He does. Could be a little fatigue setting in on Dominguez now. That counter. Once again, right <laughs> hand from Dominguez, answer with a right hand from Hesta. Well, in my mind, Mercedo Hesta has passed a big test here tonight. I think he did exactly what he told us he had on his mind and what he felt he had to do. Took command of the fight virtually from the get-go and hasn't gotten off the gas. And that's it. But well, Hester finished it the way he started it. No uh, big display of any type from Hester. Not even a smile, really. No, but that's kind of been his demeanor since he walked in the ring. Yeah. Yeah, just the one. Yeah. But very good fight. Yeah, good. Don't touch. There's
Chris Dominguez, who did raise his arm and wave to the fans when he was done. Yeah, you can with the uh, Well, I can't imagine Dominguez feels as though he's won this fight. But has the very calm. Just wiping his face over in his corner. Well, yeah. Dominguez sits there and kind of ruminates over what just happened. There's Hesta. A very workmanlike, I thought, for Hesta. I mean, he came in here with an idea of what he wanted to do. He executed it. And I believe he's going to walk out of here with an impressive victory. But let's find out what the judges thought. Here once more is Lupe Contreras. Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds, Judge Bert Clements scores about 99 to 91. Damas caballeros, después de 10 vueltas, el juez Clements anotó 99 a 91. Jerry Roth, 97 to 92. El juez Roth, 97 a 92. Y el juez Ross anotó 98 a 92. Judge Ross scores at 98 to 92. All three in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. Mercito. No mercy. Esta. I liked what I saw, Rich. Yes, I I questioned after the last fight. My questions were answered tonight here. Yeah. Hey, this is a really talented young man. Showed a lot in there. Really quick hands, great counter-punching ability. It's going to carry him a long way. He's got some power. He faced a quality opponent here tonight and beat him soundly. I had it 98-92 myself. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. And I think uh, this is the guy, you know, we overuse this phrase, but he gets it. You understand what he, what, what he needs to do. He understands what is going to give him the best chance to succeed. Speaking of succeeding, Diego Magdaleno is going to take a step up tonight, too. He's going to... Azteca Tecate, fighting out of Culiacán, Sinaloa, Mexico. Ricardo Pelón Dominguez. His opponent across the ring in the red corner. Wearing white, trimmed in orange. Rival in the esquina roja. Vestido de blanco. Con vivos color naranja, detuvo la báscula a un peso idéntico de 136 libras. He tipped the scales at an identical 136 pounds. And he enters the ring with an undefeated record of 23 victories. One bout even and 12 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Invicto hasta el momento en su carrera profesional. Con 23 victorias, un empate y 12 de sus victorias por la vía del knockout. Representing Lobogon, the Philippines. Mercito. No mercy. Esta. All right, gentlemen, we go to the rules in the dressing room. There you are, regalado Don Camerino. Protect yourselves at all times. Keep your guards up at all times. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. Mexico for. Mexico versus the Philippines will be celebrated at the highest level tomorrow night with Marquez against Pacquiao across the street at MGM Grand. But here tonight at Mandalay Bay to whet our appetites, a really good one, Mexican versus Philippines. And this, Hesta and Domingo. I think so. And I think an either way fight, really. And Hesta is a guy that really has something to prove. Don't you were good. talking about the two title fights that Dominguez had, and you asked him. During our conversation today, are, were you down? Did it bother you? Did it upset you? And he said, no. He said, I'm using it as motivation. Yeah, because I thought maybe he's a little less motivated. Now, you know, when you've lost those two title fights, you wonder, am I ever going to get another one? You know, maybe I've already peaked. This is all I can be. And I thought there might be a lessening of motivation. They said there was no way. He said it's just the opposite. More motivation for him now to be a world champion. He does have some pop. You talk about the fact that he had Soto hurt. 21 knockouts in his 34 wins. And in that fight with Soto. Incorporated in association with Tecate, patrocinador oficial. This is our co-featured bout of the evening set for 10 rounds in the lightweight division. Este es el combate co-estelar de esta noche, pactado a 10 vueltas en la categoría peso ligero. 
Los jueces son, the judges are, C.J. Ross, Jerry Roth, and Burt Clements. The referee, fair but firm, Joe Cortez. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trimmed in red and silver, presentando la esquina azul, vestido de blanco, con vivos plateados y rojos. His official weight, 136 pounds, su peso oficial, 136 libras, con un record profesional de 36 victorias, 6 derrotas, 2 empates, y 21 victorias por la vía del knockout. As a professional, he enters the ring with 36 victories against 6 losses, 2 draws, and 21 victories coming by way of knockout. El ganador del torneo, campeón. Oh, he had him in bad way in the second round. But he said he was reluctant to go in. It was his first 12 rounder, and he knew he had to probably go 12 rounds, so he didn't let all the guns go. There was a quick right hand from Hesta. Hesta, in his last fight that you referred to, uh, Barry, earlier, a 10 round decision victory over uh, Manny Perez in September. He kind of posed a lot and acted a lot. I doubt there's going to be much of that tonight. He needs to be all business. Certainly has not done that so far, and he has been all business. Brought that right hand a moment ago very quickly. The similarities to Manny Pacquiao really end at the fact that they're both Filipino and both Southpaw. Hesta, as you can see here, does not use a lot of movement the way Manny does. He's not jumping in and out. Quick right hand. Another chopping right hand, top of the head of Dominguez. Dominguez is going to want to get his jab to work here. As we say hello, we did train together at one point, but he says, you know, I'm my own guy. He said, I'm not going to try to compare myself to the other great Philippine fighters. Let's take a look at the numbers here. All right, we'll take a look at how these two square off against each other. Dominguez right smack in his prime. Hesta still pretty young, but Dominguez will have physical advantages in this, mostly his height, and he has four inches in height over Hesta. He'll try to see if that matters here this evening. Tonight, using the unified rules, there is no standing eight count or three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last. Only the ref can stop the fight. If we have to go to an accidental foul stoppage, we will go to the scorecards only after the completion of the fourth round. All right, and with that, we'll take you to the middle of the ring and the ring announcer, Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, Las Vegas, Nevada. This is, esto es, Top Rank Live. Being brought to you by, presentado por, Bob Arum's Top Rank 